my hands, my feet, I'm talking about what he's done for me. I get joy just thinking about what he's done for me. I get joy, joy thinking about what he's done for me. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome again to our Wednesday Bible study. We're so, so delighted that you joined us and that you're studying along with us on how to grow in the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ. We encourage you, please like these, like these lessons, share these lessons, subscribe to our channel, help us to grow this ministry, to be able to reach out and help others to be able to study God's word and to grow in the knowledge of God. Now, for the past few weeks, we've been talking about growing. Why grow? Isn't it enough that I've come to Christ? I've already confessed that Jesus is the Christ and had my sins washed away in baptism. The reason that we want you to grow, that the Bible teaches you to grow is that you're now part of a body, a living organism that is designed to grow. It's a concept proven in nature that when you stop growing, you start dying. Let's look at Ephesians chapter four, uh, beginning at verse 11. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. I just love this passage because Paul is telling the, telling the Ephesians that as we grow up, we are to contribute to the body and help the body grow and try to be like Christ. And the more we grow, the more we help the body to grow. And the more the body grows, the more we help others to grow. Now, when Jesus left, he left us the help that we needed to grow up in him in all things. His plan is that we become perfect or complete and be no more children. His purpose is to grow us so that we will not be carried about by every wind of doctrine. His people are to grow so that we can speak the truth in love. Paul likens the church to a body that is joined together and strengthened by every part. Each part is to supply its part to the body, which will in turn make increase of the body. That's why I'm so adamant in trying to grow up the church instead of what a lot of people talk about growing the church, uh, just adding numbers. I think that we ought to grow up the body, grow up and be no longer children. Look at what the Hebrew writer says in Hebrews chapter five, uh, beginning at verse 12 and then reading through, through chapter six to verse number two. He says, for when the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God. Here's somebody who didn't grow. Here's somebody who needs to be started all over again. And are become such as have need of milk and not strong meat. 
We all know people who have been in the body for quite a while, but they don't seem to grow in their knowledge. They don't seem to grow in holy living. They don't seem to add these seven graces. They don't seem to have a good study life and they don't have quiet time with God. We see them and we know they have not really grown. For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Chapter 6, verse 1. Therefore, because of all this that I just told you, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on into perfection. Let us strive for completion, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God, of the doctrine of baptism and of laying on of hands and resurrection of dead and of eternal judgment. Paul says it's time to move on from those early teachings and grow and be able to be able to get off of the milk and be able to have meat. Now he exhorts the saints to move on from the principles of the doctrine that brought them into Christ and no longer remain as babes on milk. Do you see how the Bible is, is full of examples of having us to grow? Peter talks about it. Paul talks about it to the Ephesians. The Hebrew writer talks about it. And verse 14, I want to focus on that for a moment. It's another area of growth that the Christian should strive for, and that is discernment between good and evil. That verse reads, but strong meat belong to them that are full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. As I grow in Christ, it will become clearer when things are good and when things are evil. The more we know of the will of God and the character of Jesus, the more we will be able to discern between what God wants and what he does not want. Our path to holy living will be populated with Bible examples of good and what Jesus sees as evil. You grow to the point where book, chapter, and verse are not needed for everything. Let me say that once again. You will grow to the point where book, chapter, and verse is not needed for everything. We will be able to discern as our, as our spiritual growth continues what is good and what was evil. We'll grow into those who love God and seek to please him as opposed to a legalist trying to hammer everybody with a thus saith the Lord. And I know we know people just like that. The word exercised refers to habitual behavior through study, prayer, meditation, and practice, we develop habits that honor God and magnify the Lord Jesus. It takes effort on our part. The disciple who habitually neglects to put in the effort will not grow and therefore will not reach spiritual maturity. It takes practice. And we know that anything new that we introduce in our routine, we need to practice it in order to get better at it. Remember how you were all over the road the first time you started driving. Remember how you would mash the brakes too hard or you wouldn't use a turn signal or you forget to check your mirrors. Through practice, these things became habits and they became a part of your driving experience. And it's the same way we will grow as Christians if we incorporate these godly living principles into our lives and make them a habit, pretty soon it'll become easier and easier to discern what it is that's good and what it is that's not. Greater discernment will also lead you into kingdom thinking. What is good 
for the kingdom. How can I honor God in the kingdom? Now, this kind of thinking steers us away from divisive words and actions because that's not good for the kingdom. Hatred, murmuring, and gossip are not good for the kingdom. Those people down at that church, that kind of talk is not good for the kingdom. As we grow in the knowledge of God, we must remember the weak ones. We're all part of the body. Let's just take baby steps. I know these last few lessons, I've given you a lot to chew on. I've given you study habits. I've given you books to read. I've given you a uh, resource to, to gather. I've given you procedures. I told you to get some quiet time. I told you about meditate. And I know that's a lot for you to put on your plate at once, but let's take baby steps. Ask God for help. James 1 and 5, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not and it shall be given him. Listen to what the apostle says. If you lack wisdom, ask of God. Now he's not just gonna tap you in your sleep and have you wake up wise like he did Solomon. No, you're gonna have to put in some effort. Songwriter says, ask the savior to help you, comfort, strengthen, and keep you. He is willing to aid you and he will carry you through. Dr. Harris in his book uh, gives us another insight. As one more reminder, sin lurks at the door to draw us away from the safety of grace. However, to defeat sin on a consistent basis, we'll need to rely more on the word of God as Jesus did in Matthew 4, when he was tempted by Satan. Moreover, we'll need to put on the whole armor of God of Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 17. In addition, we might want to develop a battle plan that includes prayer, study, accountability, and resistance techniques. In the end, we should be working to defeat sin so that we can experience spiritual growth and maturity. Please note that there are other sins that may not be listed here. With that says, please work to overcome your own personal sins by trusting God for deliverance. Again, that's quoted from Dr. J.A. Harris's book, The Path to Spiritual Growth and Maturity, Solutions to Growing a Deeper Faith. Please, 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 Get this book for your library. You will be enriched. It will help you. It will encourage you in your efforts to grow spiritually. So we all have issues that we have to confront. We all have things that, that, that dog our every step. We all have things that we're trying to resist. And we need to be able to distinguish what those things are and then ask the Lord for the help that we need. Know this, our Father in heaven is watching over his children just as an earthly parent would watch over his child. We pray for them to grow. We feed them, train them, encourage them, and correct them. Our desire is for them to grow into solid citizens and productive adults. And, and in many, in most cases, we also want them to be strong Christians. Thus, we pour all we can into their development. We teach them right from wrong. And we, we pray that they will learn enough to be able to discern between the two when we're not there. And we know that they're going to confront, they're going to be confronted by things that they're going to have to make a decision about. They're not going to have the luxury of calling us and asking us what to do. It's going to be decision time. And we pray that what we have instilled in them helps them to make the right decision. Don't you see? That's what God is trying to get us to do. He's trying to instill in us what we need 
to make the right decisions. We provide for their instruction in things that we don't know by sending them to school. Why? Because we want them to gain more knowledge than they can just gain at home. We want them to be instructed by those who are skillful at that and teach them those things that we don't know. In our efforts to, to raise them, we gain insight into parenting from friends and relatives. Everybody's got an idea how you should raise your child, but everybody doesn't have bad ideas. And so we listen, we accept some, and we reject others, but we still use insight and input from others. Now, all this is so that they can grow and repeat the cycle with their own children. We want great kids, and we want them to grow up great, and we want them to raise out some great grandkids, and so on and so on and so on. So we do all that we can to help develop them. We do all that we can to help them to grow. And that's exactly what God is doing. He does us the same way. Now, he doesn't need any insight from others and does not send us to someone else for help like we sent our child to school. But he provides all that we need and expects us to grow up in Christ. Failure to put your effort alongside what God has provided sends you away from Christ and not towards Christ. We know that if we move away from Christ, we will find no good thing. It's dangerous out there. And so God wants us to be fully equipped, strengthened, and fortified by the word of God. So, how do we grow in the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ? Through prayer, study, meditation, walking by the spirit, avoiding evil, discerning between good and evil, adding the seven graces or the seven qualities that I like to call them in 2 Peter chapter 1 making good habits to exercise your senses, focus on the kingdom and do all that is in your power to live holy lives before God and man. We can do it, church. And I know, like I say, I've given you a lot, but I want you to just start, make the effort. Wise man says the only way to eat an elephant is one bite at a time. The only way you'll be able to grow is just one step at a time. And as you put forth the effort and you see progress, you will see progress. Then it'll be encouraging to you to continue to strive to grow in the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for joining us in this series of lessons. I pray that they have been helpful to you. I pray that they are inspiring you to get busy and start growing. Our theme at Maypole for this year is Ready, Set, Grow. And Brother Johnson and I are working diligently to try to help us to grow up in Christ Jesus. Once again, we ask you to share these lessons with others, subscribe to our channel, like us on Facebook, and help us to spread this ministry. Until next week, we pray that you'll be careful and be prayerful. God bless you. It's in my hands, my feet, I'm talking about what he's done for me. I get joy just thinking about what he's done for me. I get joy, joy thinking about what he's done for me.